Glenn, um, 40 meter dipole with a frequency of 7 megahertz SWR 3 to 8, 7.2 megahertz SWR 3 to 2, and 7.3 SWR 2.6. Add or take away wire. That written down. Add. Yeah. So yeah. what's happening? Look. Yeah. So what's happening here is yeah. your frequency is going up and your SWR is going down. So sorry, Adam, you were saying. Yeah. So so most likely you need to add wire. Um, I, I would double check your your lengths and and if you're if you're truly close to you know quarter wavelength elements off the ends or total of a half wavelength, it's you probably need to add a little bit of wire. Um, if you're if you're if you measure it and it's much too long, then then you may be somewhere off, you know, in, in left field with it. But odds are you're you're a little bit too short. Share, you should share uh, your thoughts, um, To, on what we were discussing before on the um, on your stream uh, to do with antenna analyzers. Yeah, I think that an antenna analyzer, since we're at the point now where it's all code on a microchip, I think you can set it for say twenty meters and then plug your antenna in and it should be able to tell from the SWR and a broadbanded sweep whether your antenna is too long or too short for the frequency that you're interested in and then tell you make it longer or make it shorter. Um, you, know, you can, you, you sort of get a feel for it after you've built your first antenna that if you are trying for 14 meters and you're 1.0 to one at 13.8, your antenna is a bit too long because you're getting lower in the frequency and a lower frequency is resonant on a longer piece of wire. So your wire is too long. Um, but it's one of those things that you have to kind of like visualize and think through. And so that question with the SWR calculations at the different frequencies, that's not how it works in my mind. So I was just like, I need a different piece of information to give you that answer. But Adam's better at that stuff than I am. Adam's who I go to when I have antenna questions. Well, I was also going to chime in with, and Adam, correct me if I'm wrong here, but if you get, uh, if you measure your antenna and you sweep it and you find where the low point or your SWR low point is, you get that frequency uh, and you use the frequency that you want it on, you divide that by the measured frequency uh, with the lowest SWR, you divide those two together and then you'll get a number which you can then multiply the actual length of the antenna by and then that will give you the proper length that you should have or pretty close to it anyway i think for that your specific right. wire yeah 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 and and the the other a couple other tips i'll throw in there is is make sure you're tuning it up off the ground because uh having it, it close to the ground makes the end make the wire while well, the antenna um, act like it's longer than it actually is and when you bring it higher off the ground especially with like a 40 meter band um, when yeah. you bring it higher off the ground it's that that resonant frequency is going to go up so um, so be cautious of that and then the other thing I'll say is that a, a really good helpful tip is rather than cutting the wire fold it back on itself and kind of you know wrap it so it's it close together yeah I, I give it a little bit of a twist just so it stays together throw a piece of masking tape or duct tape on there and adjust the length that way um, by folding it back on itself like that it's almost identical to cutting it to that length um, it, it only adds a very small electrical length when it folds back on itself like that yeah and i'll add also that uh when i do it i always deploy the antenna long with so it's extra extra wire but i deploy it as it's going to be deployed mm -hmm. uh so because all the uh, everything around your environment will all influence the swr a little bit and so, like when I'm making a, a soda antenna for the field, I get in my backyard and I'll I'll use the same mass I'm going to use in the field, and it's, it's everything. I can try to duplicate everything as much as possible, and then you know start cutting and and uh, and doing the frequencies. I do the same thing as Charlie. I my my string or whatever I use for the bottom, I cut the same length, so it's so it goes up the same every time. But if they're doing an inverted V, try just raising the ends up and spreading them out wider. And check your your SWR then because it can make a huge difference if you don't like Adam was saying get it up off the ground too. You I usually add at least ten feet to any any rope that I put on the end of my uh, antennas to get that to yeah. get the the ground at least. 
Yeah, and um, the other shout out that I also put out is for MMANA as well. So Adam, I know that you use MMANA a lot. Uh, Callum from DX Commander, you'll see a lot of his videos. He uses MMANA, and it might seem really complex at first. I'm still learning a lot about it, but it might seem like it's a, a lot to drive. But if you just experiment with simple dipoles in that software, you'll start to see what changing the links having them above height does to the radiation pattern and the SWR and all these sort of things um, in, in a modelled environment and then you can apply that to uh, what it's going to be like uh, in the field. Right. There's yeah, like, super handy. Sorry, there's there's a really good uh, uh, calculator online that tells you exactly how high you go with it, how far you go out with it, and how long your ends are. And I, don't, I wish I... A friend of mine gave it to me one time, and I should have bookmarked it, and I did. I can find it though. Um, that's a really good one because it, it and it's pretty much right on too, outside of your ground, the ground you're over, you know. 